Hello everyone, today I'm here to react to episode 7 of season 3 of Outer Banks. We are officially in the back half of the season now and I'm excited to see how the mystery is gonna start ramping up and wrapping up and finding the El Dorado road because it's interesting that like El Dorado has been introduced in the first episode of this season but like we really haven't made much steps to get there if that makes sense like I feel like we're kind of we've got more clues but we're still in the outer banks like we haven't made any more steps to figuring out where this road is or how we're going to get there necessarily so I'm also excited to see how Ward is going to come into play now that he is back in the OBX baby I'm not a fan of him but I am a fan of anyone who can put Rafe in their place and I feel like he's the only one even if it's legally like <laughs> locking him out of contracts and stuff like that that can put Rafe back and like kicking down a few notches so I'm excited to look forward to that because I think Rafe has definitely had it coming for a while now but even more so this season so I'm excited either way it's gonna be fun to watch Poor JJ. It's kind of weird that like JJ and him are the only two in on this right now. Like I wish they would go get the rest of them. Um, I get it's kind of time urgent so they don't really have the means to but it just feels it feels weird that we've never had like since Poglania a cohesive group of them all working together. Like someone or multiple people are always not there and it just doesn't feel like how it used to feel. I don't like it. Ew, that's not good. <laughs> that means someone else has been here. I mean, I guess it's good in the sense that they won't be caught with the dead body like JJ was worried about, but bad in the sense that like all their evidence and proof is gone. <laughs> Ooh, should have maybe changed the locks, buddy boy. Maybe that should have been number one on the list before melting down the gold. I mean, he had to know this was coming. He had to know you called his bluff being like, you can't come here, you're dead. Like he had to know this was happening. He's gonna, oh, his smile's so swarmy. He's gonna be pissed because that's the thing I've always been saying about Rafe is like as bad as Ward is, at least he acknowledges like the historical significance of this stuff and wants to treat it with some respect. He wants it for his own, but I feel like he also is wanting to treat it with some respect. Rafe has none of that. He really does not get it, Rafe. Like, I don't understand what is gonna finally put it through his thick head that he is not the good guy here. You can't stay here. Yeah, I knew he was gonna say that. He's like, he's perfectly fine here. He's doing great. He's got his little business associate with Barry. Like, he doesn't wanna leave and go and be second fiddle to you. Uh-oh. I think Ward is starting to realize that himself. That like, one, it's kind of true. And two, his son is way farther gone than he realized. I think they always knew there was like a darkness to him, obviously. But like, not just how far. How far the greed and the anger and the resentment go, you know? These girls are too cool to be sitting around thinking about these boys who don't even have to give them the time of day. I'm sorry. Like, no. How did Wheezy get to Outer Banks? I'm so sorry. Did she like follow her dad here? She's acting like she ran away just like from home. It's like, no, that's a whole other country that you ran away from to get here. But yeah, I was thinking about this the other day too. I'm kind of irritated that I feel like a lot of Key's character this season has just been boiled down to like her relationship with JJ. And like as much as I was excited for them to get together, I don't like that it seems to be at the expense of any character growth with Key. Like I feel like that's all she's been aside from being kidnapped in the beginning is just like worrying about JJ and JJ's problems and stuff like that and yeah I get that like that would be obviously part of her character but I just hate that it's become so much this season you know because she's so much more than that. Keep what down? He just stepped in the boat dude. <laughs> Jeez oh my gosh I mean I hope they're at least here to also warn him that like he is next like everyone else right he's the only one right it was just the two of them i think that are left like they have to warn him mm. and you're next they better tell him that's the next thing he's got to know that everyone else except for him is dead because he seemed to be preparing himself but like his boat was still just sitting idly on the the bank of the shore where anyone could come 
I mean, the man has got a point. Like, maybe it's things men or whatever, but it, it is, like, yeah, you don't want to get involved with this. I guess John B's point is that, like, he's already very far involved in this. Okay, I guess there's... <laughs> they were so careful to sneak into everyone else's house, it seems like, and this guy, they're just coming in like, hey, we're coming in! Like, that's... That's an interesting tactic, I guess. Maybe it's because it's more secluded, but it's just funny that everyone else, they try to make it seem like accidental or like some kind of, you know, naturally occurring thing. And him, they're just like, let's go in full guns a-blazing. Oh, how did he hear that? I mean, that was loud, but how did he hear that? Bye, sir. Oh, no, the keys. Well, there goes any escape route they had. I really don't want this man to die. Everyone else has died, and I am so attached to him. Like, he just wants to live his life out on his boat and not bother anyone. <gasps> JJ with the knife. That's so scary. Oh, my gosh. Bye. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really hope he makes it. I really, really like him. Like, my fingers are crossed. And he seems to be the most able to just, like, move around, you know? Like, if he's on a boat, like, he can just leave, skip, keep going. Like, I really hope he makes it. He's the last one and also the one I'm most attached to. She's so funny. I love her. I just love her. I was thinking about it in my head, like, obviously I haven't finished the season about how I would rank the characters though this season still and for me currently and I don't really think it's gonna change with three episodes but who knows maybe currently it would be Cleo obviously number one Sarah Pope Key JJ and then John B last sorry not sorry <gasps> it was him that makes so much more sense I was like how did Wheezy get from here and why also would she run away Wheezy's kind of out of everyone doing great down there. Weezy's like, I'll do what Dad says, it's fine. Yikes. Oh, Maddie, her acting is just like sending it. Oh, she's so good. I can't wait to see like what else she does throughout her career because she is just amazing. Yeah, um, sir, you choked her out. Like, she has a good reason to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so why are you blaming her then? Yeah, so then you can't blame her for being angry and hostile and have hatred. Like, it's gonna take some time to work through that, if she ever even decides to work through it. Maddie, though, she did so good in this scene. Like, I have to give her all the credit, because it's like, for as messed up as Sarah has been feeling, and like, how she's like, I don't know who I am right now. Like, it's because of him. It's because of him. Like, she said that she has nowhere to go, that she has no family, that she doesn't know who she is. And it's like, it's nice that, like, she's finally being able to direct that anger and that confusion at someone who deserves it. Yeah, um... Pure of heart and pure of mind, I'm guessing John B could kind of get like that, but I'm a little worried about Big John being able to just leave and not go after the gold because it seems like that's the point is like you just have to leave the gold and get your dad and get out of there like this gold does not do anyone any good which again is kind of how a lot of treasure hunts go when you actually think about it like when you think of the life of a treasure hunter would you really want to do it I don't think so I don't think the gold is worth that honestly see this is the other thing they told them nothing and now they're just gonna show up and be like hey we gotta go to South America like, I'd be like, I need a minute, or <laughs> you know? Like, Sarah just found out her dad is back in town, and her brother's there, and, I mean, Key's still trying to figure out everything with her mom and dad. Like, they just can't drop everything at the drop of a hat because it's like they just show up again and now want to clue them in on everything. I will say, also, Key and Sarah, once again, phenomenal outfits. Like, their outfits the entire season have been great, but, like, there's always just some where I'm like, oh, you look amazing. <laughs> Gosh. He's such a puppy dog. It's like he thinks everything is fine and it's like, bro, a lot has happened since we've seen you. We need some time to catch up. Yes, and I'm glad you're owning it, thankfully. That makes me feel a little bit better. They are sweet. When they're good together, they're good together. It's just when he's a butthole to her, I'm not on his side and things. It's like, Sarah, get behind. 
I mean, you guys really just made out, right? Hooked up kind of has, I feel like his mind could go anywhere. I'm glad she told him at least, you know, like it's not like something she's gonna hide or keep a secret. Like I think that's very mature of her and shows like her, her, who she is, you know, as much as she's questioning who she is, like I think that shows she's a good person. So I'm proud of her for that. We didn't just drop that on her. Like she didn't know that. I freaking knew he was gonna frame this as like, how could you do this kind of thing when like he hasn't clued her in on anything that's been happening for the last three days and I just, the fact that he's gonna act so butthurt now when like she didn't even know if he was okay or not, like that, that's where he loses me. Like he absolutely has every right to be upset but just to act like it's like such a betrayal because of what he was going through is like, she didn't know any of that. You can't hold that against her. I like how both my girls, and this is why I love them, are like, we can't just go to South America. Like, I'm sorry, but like, we can't. Yeah, exactly. Like, you can't just show up and be like, hey, everything's fine. We're going. She's saying she can't. Don't make her find, sound like, feel guilty. You know what I mean? Like, this is what him and JJ are doing. John B and JJ are making it seem like they're just like, they don't care. But it's like, there's other things they have to worry about, unfortunately, you know? Oh gosh, his face, he's like, no, you don't. He said thanks when she said she, he lo oh gosh, I'm cringing. Like that's BS, that's BS. That's what him and John are doing so bad. Like I feel like it's like, it's not, gaslighting but it is like a form of like emotional manipulation I feel like trying to make them feel guilty and make them feel like they should be the complete caretakers of their significant others feelings even when the significant others aren't being open and honest about their feelings and like that to me is crazy like you don't get to tell you don't get to not tell me what's going on and then throw it in my face that I'm not helping Oh my gosh, he was gonna walk away till you said that topper and now I'm not gonna feel bad when he punches you in the face, okay? Yeah, okay. You so had that coming. <laughs> like, should John B have done that? No, but Top needs to learn to shut his mouth. And Sarah better not be blamed for any of this shit, okay? Because this is just two male egos right now fighting it out and like, I, no, it's not her fault at all. Meanwhile, the only like actual sane couple right now, that's not even really a couple, but they are the only ones that like are actually supportive and good for each other right now. See, this is what like the other couples need. This is when I really liked like Sarah and John B when they were like solving mysteries together and not just being like, I mean, I get that she messed up, right? But like, I feel like I'm just so sympathetic to her because I get where she's coming from and like, it's such a hard position to be in. I guess it's kind of like, to compare the mess ups of her and John B are not, they're not exactly similar, but I feel like there was a breach of trust on both ends and like for him to just act like he doesn't even want to talk or understand or explain like her mindset and her feelings after the last thing. And I know he apologized for it, but after the last thing he said to her was throwing it in her face that like his dad's back and her dad tried to kill her. Like, I just feel like that shows like a lack of maturity on his part. And then JJ, especially the way he was talking to Kay, I think was just so like manipulative, trying to make her feel guilty and stuff for, I mean, rightfully being like, I want to talk. Like, I can't just like follow you and talk when it's convenient for you and you need me, you know? And then we've got Cleo and Pope who are just like, I mean, she saved him the last episode and their interactions. This one were so cute and they're finding the treasure and moving forward together. And it just makes me excited that at least there's one couple that I can root for, you know, because I think they're really good for each other and they're really cute and sweet and they're solving the mystery. So that's exciting now that we've got this whole new stuff about Pope's heritage. And yeah, we will see what happens now that we know South America is the journey, but that not everyone wants to or can go on the journey. So it'll be interesting to see who actually makes it down there because it's not like just, I don't know, it's not like digging up the gold at Tanny Hill or something like that. You know, it's a bit farther and more involved. So I know there's a crunch time with his dad, but I also feel like it's a bigger stakes for the rest of them to just leave, especially after, you know, they were missing for so long, especially in Sarah's and um, Key's case. I feel like they've got people that are going to be, 
you know, I mean, I mean, I guess more key with her family that are going to be more worried about her, but I feel like Sarah's also kind of tired and like, you know, wants to settle down and like figure things out and take a moment to breathe. Like, remember when Top was like, oh, is it nice to have like a day where you, or she even said it, it's nice to have a day where like it's not and then Top finished it like of being chased by the police and like running for your life. She's like, yeah, because it is, you know, it's nice to have a moment of levity and to breathe and to try and figure things back out. So like, I don't blame them for not just being like, yeah, let's go to South America with the boys, you know, um, even if it is to save John B's dad, but like they've got to catch them up on everything. They can't just show up and be like, let's go. We haven't talked to you, but now we're ready. So let's go. Like there's just a lot they need to work on. So yeah, we'll see what happens in the next couple episodes, but I'm excited to check it out and see if we're going to get closer to El Dorado by the end of the season. So if you have seen this episode, please feel free to leave your thoughts about it down in the comments. Also make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!